Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Duluth. Thank you very much. I am thrilled to be back in the great state of Minnesota with truly some of the most incredible people anywhere on earth. You know that. And you know, I hate to bring this up, but we came this close to winning the state of Minnesota. And in two and a half years, it's going to be really easy, I think. Really easy. It's been many, many decades since the Republican did that, and I thought I was going to do it. I needed one more visit, one more speech. That's why never give up, never, ever give up. One more speech. Now, we're very proud of Minnesota. Let me also say, Congratulations to the Bulldogs on winning the NCAA Championship Hockey Tournament. Wow, that's a big deal. Right in this arena, this is where they play, right? Boy, I hear they're a great team. And how many are going to the NHL? How many? Two, three, that's a lot. They're gonna do it. Great team, thank you. Great team, the Bulldogs. So we're honored to be joined tonight by many wonderful Republican leaders, including our incredible House Majority Leader, Kevin McCarthy. Kevin, come up, please. Where's Kevin? Where Kevin. He sends a lot of money this way, I want to tell you. I also want to thank and maybe just ask him to come up. We have all night long, right? Do we have time? All night. We're not going anywhere. Some great people. Congressman Sean Duffy. Great champion. Come up, Sean. Come up. Great champion. You know, the, you know, the whole thing going up the trees and down the trees. Number one in the world for four or five years. Come here. With a great, great wife, by the way. Very talented. Tom Emmer, congressman, loves this state. And a very popular man in the state of Minnesota, Jason Lewis. I also want to thank Lieutenant Governor Michelle Fishbach for being here. She has been so great. Got a big race coming along. It's going to do great along with State Senator Karen Housley. Karen, come on up here. Get him up here. Where are you? Stay there. Too much of a deal. Good luck. Karen, good luck. Michelle, thank you. Also, a friend of mine and a man who's been incredible and a great supporter, Minnesota Senate Majority Leader Paul Gazelka. And Minnesota Republican Party Chair Jennifer Carnahan, who has been fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, the person we're all here to support tonight, somebody who's very special, by the way, loves ice hockey. Real ice hockey family. In fact, his brother, you know, the coach of the winning women's team in the Olympics, not bad. Great family. The next congressman from Minnesota's 8th Congressional District, the great Pete Stauber. Come on up.
I'll tell you, is this a pretty good send off for Pete? This is not bad, right? Hey, Pete. Say a few words. He wasn't supposed to do this, but let's hear him, right? Come on, come on. Thank you, Mr. President. Welcome to the city of Duluth and the great state of Minnesota. And as you alluded to, the home of college hockey's national champions, the University of Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs. I'm Pete Stauber, and I'm running in Minnesota's 8th Congressional District because, like President Trump, I love this country. I love our freedoms. And I love our Constitution. Mr. President, before your election, you made a promise to visit Minnesota, and you promised more jobs, fewer regulations, and a better economy for everyone. Now, jobs are up, unemployment numbers are at a historic low, small businesses and manufacturers are surging, And optimism is at an all-time high. My blue-collar, common-sense, conservative message is resonating throughout the 8th District. Mr. President, these people support you. And Mr. President, these are the same people that are going to send me to Washington so together we can unleash the economic engine in northern Minnesota. <laughs> On behalf of the Minnesotans here today, thank you for coming to our great state and for always putting America for always putting America and the American worker first. Thank you. God bless America. Thank you very much. So I didn't know he was going to do that. And then he takes out a speech and reads it. I said, that's pretty good. He is a great guy and he loves you and he loves his country and he's gonna do fantastically. He's gonna win, we're gonna keep on winning. Remember I used to say in a little jest, but I really meant it, we're gonna win so much. Remember, we're gonna win, win, win. That's what we're doing. Remember, I said your governor or your senator or Pete or somebody, they're going to come into Washington and say, Mr. President, please, we're winning too much. The people of Minnesota cannot stand winning so much. Please, can we take it easy? And I said, no, we're going to keep winning, winning, winning. So we 
we've created 3.4 million new jobs since Election Day. 3.4. And I've said before, if I would have said that to you during the campaign, those very dishonest people back there, the fake news, very dishonest. They would have said he's exaggerating. These are very dishonest people, many of them, and we have some fine people, too, doing that. But there's a lot of very dishonest people. For instance, I just got back, as you know, from Singapore, where I met... where I met Kim Jong-un. And we had a great meeting, great chemistry. We got along really well, which is very important. They didn't want us to, but, they, you know, it's, like, nice to do that. And very interestingly, at first everybody was amazed, amazed that we had the meeting. They couldn't believe it. The first 24 hours, they said, I can't believe it. You remember that a while ago? They said, they're going to meet. Then about a day later, they said, what's the big deal with the meeting? What's the big deal? In other words, their bosses said, you can't say that. But the beauty was this. So we had a meeting. It was an incredible success. And they said, the president gave away so much. He met with them. I said, what else? That was, I met. What am I supposed to do? I have to meet, right? He met. Now, sentence one says, a total denuclearization of North Korea. We got back our hostages. And I didn't pay $1.8 billion to get back our hostages. We got back our great fallen heroes, the remains. In fact, today, already 200 have been sent back. They stopped shooting missiles over Japan. They stopped all nuclear testing. They stopped nuclear research. They stopped rocketry. They stopped everything that you'd want them to stop. And they blew up sites where they test and do the testing. And it was a great meeting, and Kim Jong-un will turn down, and I will tell, he will turn, Chairman Kim, will turn that country into a great, successful country. And let me tell you, and let me tell you, let me tell you this. A year and a half ago, nobody thought that was possible. In fact, before I was elected, everybody assumed we were going to war. It would be a vicious war. In Seoul, you have 28 million people living 30 miles off the border. They don't even need nuclear weapons for that. They have thousands of cannons aiming right on top of Seoul. You could have lost millions and millions of people. But I got along with Kim Jong-un. I got along. And that's a good thing, not a bad thing. And these people, you remember, I said, I can't believe it. He's given away so much. You know what I gave away? A meeting. That was a meeting. And the fact that we do get along means we're safe. I'm not saying things can't happen, things go wrong, mistakes are made, relationships get broken. But right now, you are so safe, and such a great event took place, and all over Asia.
And all over Asia, they're celebrating the great achievement that we made because you were the ones that put me here. We made, that we made, all over Asia. And really all over the world. And by the way, in our country, everybody knows what a great achievement this is, not only for us, but for North Korea, for South Korea, for Japan, for China, for everybody. And I have to say, you know, you've been reading where I've been putting very large tariffs on China. Very, very large. We hit the 250 billion mark, but I want to say, and that we have to do that because it has to be balanced. It has to be fair. It wasn't fair. China and President Xi has really helped us a lot at the border of North Korea. Really helped us a lot. And he's a friend of mine. He's a friend of mine. So you should be very proud of yourselves for what took place because that was very close to war for many years. Many years, it was very, very close. And now we can have something where everybody is going to live in peace for a long period of time, and there will be denuclearization. So that's the real story. Thank you. That's the real story. The real story. So unemployment numbers are among the best in the history of our country. African-American unemployment is at its lowest level in the history of our country. Hispanic American unemployment has reached its lowest level ever recorded in the history of our country. And remember, I'd go into big stadiums like this that were packed. And by the way, you're very good at real estate. Did you see the thousands and thousands of people outside that will never be reported by the fake news, but the thousands of people that couldn't get in? Many thousands. They're all over. The parking lots, they're all over. And it would be great if the cameras could take a shot of the arena. And I usually go home and my wife would say, how was the crowd? Although, honestly, when you have many thousands of people like we have tonight, you know, I was at an event three weeks ago where a person from the New York Times said there was only a thousand people. And the people, the many thousands that were there protested. I didn't even have to do it. And they wrote a slight correction. They were off by many thousands of people. That's the way it is. It's fake news, I'm telling you. So fake. But usually they don't show the arena, they just show my face. So people would say, did you have many people there? Oh, didn't you see? No, no, they've only showed your face. And we all have ego, but I don't want to show my face. I want to show the crowds. It's much prettier. Because you people are incredible. Unemployment among women has reached the lowest level as of today in 65 years, 65 years. And most importantly of all, America is respected again. We're respected. We're fighting to protect American iron, aluminum, and steel, and to protect our incredible and very brave miners. But I'll tell you, to keep this incredible momentum, I think maybe the most successful that the country has ever had. I think we are now at the most successful level that the country has ever seen. That's how we're doing. And let me just tell you, because I hear a couple of the fakers the other day said, well, I think it's Obama's economy. Obama's economy. 
of bum. They want to put on more regulations. They want to take back your tax cuts, which are massive. They want to take them back, and they want to raise the hell out of your taxes, and the whole thing will go boom. So we need more Republicans. We got to get out there in the midterm. We got to get more Republicans. Got to get more Republicans. A vote for a Democrat for Congress is really a vote for Nancy Pelosi and her radical agenda. Democrats want to raise your taxes, increase your regulations, shut down American energy, take over American health care, which has been a disaster with Obamacare, and ship away American jobs. And that's what they will do if anything bad happens to this country. It will be a disaster for all of you, but we're not going to let it happen. We worked too hard to get here. And the greatest phrase, I think, in the history of politics is on all of those red and white hats that I see out there, make America great again. And that's exactly what we're doing. Make America great again. And you know what our new phrase is in two and a half years. You know what it is, right? Keep America great. That's what it is, because that's where we are. So the Democrats want open borders. Let everybody come in. Let everybody pour in. We don't care. Let them come in from the Middle East. Let them come in from all over the place. We don't care. We're not going to let it happen. And by the way, today I signed an executive order. We're going to keep families together, but the border is going to be just as tough as it's been. <laughs> Democrats don't care about the impact of uncontrolled migration on your communities, your schools, your hospitals, your jobs or your safety. Democrats put illegal immigrants before they put American citizens, what the hell is going on? <laughs> Illegal immigration costs our country hundreds of billions of dollars. So imagine if we could spend that money to help bring opportunity to our inner cities and our rural communities and our roads and our highways and our schools. So we've already started the wall. We got 1.6 billion. The wall has been started. San Diego and lots of different places. And we go, but boy, it's tough. They want to do anything they can to obstruct and to make sure it doesn't happen. But it's happening. It's happening. Uh, we have a single protester. There he goes. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, darling. So we have a single protester. He's going home to his mom. Say hello to mommy. And tomorrow, the fake news will say tomorrow, massive protests at the Trump rally. One person. Massive protests. Ay, ay, ay. So we're going to make it great for Americans, and we're going to take care of people. And we do want people coming across our border, going through our ports of entry. But we want people to come in through merit, not just through luck or happenstance. We want them to come in through merit. And we need people. Because we have so many companies now, and you know very well in Minnesota what's happening. They just gave me a run through. What's happening in Minnesota is incredible. 
But we have so many companies moving back into our country. We need people to help, but we want them to come in through the merit system, not a system where we get MS-13 and everybody else that other countries don't want. And the Democrats' open border policies have also allowed MS-13 to break into our country and drugs to pour into our streets, and we're stopping it. We have taken out of our country, and actually, can you believe I have to say this, we have liberated towns, liberated, like, like it was captured by a foreign country. We have liberated towns out in Long Island. MS-13, <laughs> gangs, we have taken them out of our country by the thousands. And these countries that send them back, we're putting in legislation. We're not giving them any more aid when they send people up. Remember the original speech, right? My original speech. They are sending, you remember those words? Everyone said, oh, how terrible. They are sending, well, let me tell you, they're sending and they're not sending their finest, that I can tell you. And we're sending them the hell back. And what we're doing, what we're doing, We give hundreds of millions of dollars of aid to countries. We have a horrible deal, as an example, with NAFTA and Mexico. Horrible deal. They make over a hundred billion dollars on that horrible trade deal where factories were emptied, so many bad things have happened, and we're going to make it a part of NAFTA because you have to mark up thousands of miles coming through Mexico you come up thousands of miles coming through Mexico, and we're going to stop it. Get them out of here. Get them out of here. Go home to your mom, darling. Go home. Get them out of here. Out. Was that a man or a woman? Because he needs a haircut more than I do. Oh. Couldn't tell, couldn't tell. I couldn't tell, needs a haircut. But the media never talks about the American victims of illegal immigration. I know them well, I know so many of them. I campaigned with them. What's happened to their children? What's happened to their husbands? What's happened to their wives? The media doesn't talk about the American families permanently separated from their loved ones because Democrat policies release violent criminals into our communities. We need safety. We need safety. They don't bring cameras to interview the angel moms whose children were killed by criminal aliens who should have never been here in the first place, not even close. They don't want to talk to the angel moms. But as your president, I will always fight to protect American families. Always. fight for an immigration system that defends our borders and takes care of our sovereignty as a nation. I will never sacrifice the safety and security of the American people. And I will never be silent in the face of vicious smears and attacks 
and the heroic agents and officers of ICE and the Border Patrol who save millions, just the job they do, save thousands and thousands of lives and are so brave and are so tough. If you want to create a humane, lawful system of immigration, then you need to retire the Democrats and elect Republicans to finally secure our borders. Because we need Democrat votes. We have a majority of one in the Senate. We need Democrat votes in the Senate. We need additional votes in the House. We will have the greatest borders, the greatest walls. We've already started, but it's a lot tougher than it needs to be. We need Republicans to get out and put Republicans in. In case, uh, in case you don't know, in the Senate, we need, unfortunately, 60 votes. We have 51 votes. We need Democrats. They will do anything to obstruct, anything to make it as uncomfortable as possible, because they think it's good politics. I actually think it's bad politics. We will see very soon. We're building it. We're building the wall. That wall is happening. Under the previous administration, America's rich natural resources, of which your state has a lot, were put under lock and key, including thousands of acres in Superior National Forest. You know what that is, right? Tonight, I'm proudly announcing that we will soon be taking the first steps to rescind the federal withdrawal in Superior National Forest and restore mineral exploration for our amazing people and miners and workers and for the people of Minnesota, one of the great natural reserves of the world. And we'll do it carefully. And maybe if it doesn't pass muster, we won't do it at all, but it is going to happen, I will tell you. It's going to happen, and it's happening fast. We've already taken it, as you know, a long way down the road. And it's going to make things better. It's going to make it, from an environmental standpoint, better. As a result of our massive tax cuts, millions of Americans are receiving much bigger paychecks. Much bigger. We've eliminated record numbers of job-killing regulations. By the way, so a few days ago, it was 500 days. So now it's like 511. In 500 days, we've cut more regulations than any president in the history of our country, whether it's four years, eight years, or in one year. In one case, 16 years. We've cut more regulations in 500 days than any president, even our 16-year president. We've opened up energy exploration in Anwar in Alaska. They've been trying to do that from before the days of Ronald Reagan. Couldn't get it done. We repealed the core of Obamacare. The individual mandate is gone so unpopular. The individual mandate where you pay a fortune for the privilege of not paying for insurance for health care. And let me tell you, we just repealed it. You don't have to pay anymore. So big. So big. And we would have repealed and replaced Obamacare, although we've got a long way toward doing that anyway. We just had to do it a longer route because we had a gentleman late into the morning hours go thumbs down. That was not a good thing he did. That was not a good thing for our people, for our country, whether you're Democrat or Republican. And everybody said, oh, good, we have his vote. We have everybody's vote. We were going in for a routine repeal and replace, and he went thumbs down. Not nice. That was not done. 
We're bringing back our jobs from other countries. We're bringing back our companies from other countries. Chrysler is coming back. Chrysler just announced they're coming back. Many, many companies are coming back to our country. They know where the action is. This is where they want to be. And as far as trade is concerned with other countries, we want fair and reciprocal trade. We don't want stupid trade like we had for so long. Stupid trade. Remember the word reciprocal. Remember the word reciprocal. We have been ripped off by almost every country on earth, our friends and our enemies. And I hate to say it, our friends do a bigger and better job than the enemies. But those days are over. Those days are over. And even before we finish off with the trade deals, and we will finish off with the trade deals. People don't realize we have the cards because we're the piggy bank that everybody was robbing for 30 years. We're like the piggy bank. Let's go get some more. You look at the European Union. They put up barriers so that we can't sell our farm products in. And yet they sell Mercedes and BMW and the cars come in by the millions. And we hardly tax them at all. They don't take our cars, and if they do, the tax is massive. So they're basically saying, we're going to sell you millions of cars. By the way, you're not going to sell us any. Not going to work that way anymore, folks. Not going to work that way. We will not be taken advantage of anymore. We're a great country. We're going to be an even greater country, hopefully greater than we've ever been before. We have such potential. We just secured a record $700 billion in funding to rebuild our military, which was in very sad shape. And we have approval for next year, $716 billion. We're ordering new planes. We make the best in the world. We're ordering new ships. We're ordering new military equipment. And we even gave our great warriors a raise. the veterans, we passed the largest VA reforms in half a century, a landmark VA accountability law. You know what that is. You couldn't fire anybody that worked in the VA. They were sadistic in some cases. They were lazy. They were this. There were lots of different things. You could never fire anybody because the accountability, you could forget it. So we passed a bill that they've been trying to pass for almost 40 years. It's called VA accountability, where now you bring the person into the office and you say, Jim, I'm sorry to tell you, you're fired. Get out of here. Boom. And even more important, and I didn't think I'd be saying this so soon because I would campaign on this. I used to go out during the campaigns, and you know, because I was in Minnesota a lot, but obviously one more trip, ay, ay, ay. that won't happen again. But one that's really important to me, and I used to say to myself, I wonder why doctors don't just take care of our great vets. We just passed Veterans Choice legislation, passed, signed. That gives our veterans the care they deserve, the care they earn. Now look, so our veterans were waiting online for nine days, for 12 days, for three weeks. Some went online with a minor problem. They ended up having a terminal disease. 
Now, I said during the campaign, before I knew too much about it, but there's a lot of common sense in life. I say, instead of one of our great veterans waiting for two, three, four, five weeks, why don't we let him go see a doctor and pay the bill? And that's what we're doing. That's veteran's choice. That's veteran's choice. And you know, when I went to people, I thought, well, I thought, oh, I think I'm such a genius, okay. I thought this was like the greatest idea, but I went to the vet groups, I went to every, yeah, we've been trying to get that past served for 30 years, okay? I didn't know that, but what I did know is I knew how to get it passed, and we got it passed. Two weeks ago. And by the way, we passed another one, it's called Right to Try. Do you know what Right to Try is? Very proud of it. Right to Try. These are people that are terminally ill. It's, it's sad. They travel all over the world if they have the money. If they don't, they don't know what to do. If we have drugs that haven't been approved yet, but are showing tremendous promise, it didn't matter. It didn't matter how sick you were, where you were, you couldn't get it. And the reason was they didn't want to do anything that's going to hurt you. You're not going to be around for five weeks. In five weeks, I kept saying, why can't we do something? If people had the money, they'd travel to Africa, to Asia, to Europe, trying to find the cure. It was called hope. They wanted hope, and they couldn't get it. I said, it's ridiculous. I got involved, and this is also like Veterans Choice. For many years, people have tried to pass. And Kevin was a great help, I have to tell you. Kevin McCarthy, who just left the stage, was a great help. So were your congressman, a great help. And we got right to try passed, and four weeks ago, I signed final legislation, and we're very proud. And many people are gonna be saved. Many, many people are going to be saved. And you'd think it would be easy, but it wasn't. Between the insurance companies and the healthcare companies and the pharmaceutical companies, it was incredible. But we did that. And now we're bringing down the prices for prescription drugs way down. So we've made this incredible progress together with your help, with the help of the millions and millions of people that, well, some polls got it right, but not all polls got it right. But they showed up, and the beginning of that night, people are saying, you know, this could be a big problem for the Democrats. They were not liking what they were seeing. They were seeing too many of those hats. They were seeing too many people with, you know that. That was an amazing evening. That was one of the most incredible evenings, because that's a movement the likes of which this country has never seen before. This country has never seen. You know, we talk about the forgotten men and women. They're the smartest people. They work the hardest. They pay taxes. They do all of the things. And yet, they were the forgotten people. And believe me, our people are the smartest and the hardest working. Smarter than anybody and the hardest working. You know, a little thing I was talking about today. You ever notice they always call the other side, and they do this up, the elite, the elite. Why are they elite? I have a much better apartment than they do. I'm smarter than they are. I'm richer than they are. I became president and they didn't. Representing the greatest, smartest, most loyal, best people on earth. The deplorables, remember that? The deplorables. Oh. You know, I was watching when Crooked Hillary made, and by the way, is it, hey, excuse me, have you been seeing, have you been watching what's been going on with the Inspector General's report? What a scam this whole thing is.
Okay? How guilty is she? With Peter Strzok and his lover, Lisa Page. I don't think their wife and husband are too happy about that. What do you think? What do you think? I don't think so. No, but have you been seeing this whole scam? Have you been, do you believe what you're seeing? How, no matter what she did, no matter how many crimes she committed, which were numerous, they wanted her to be innocent. With me, nothing. No collusion, no nothing. And they just wanted to take all of us. They wanted to put us in trouble. And it's not working too well, I'll tell you. Disgusting. Called the phony witch hunt. Phony witch hunt. But you look at the corruption. Did you ever see anything like it, really? Today, more things. That's why they're building up immigration, so you can't see what's going on in Congress. They're building up immigration. They don't want to show what's happening in Congress where this whole scam has been revealed. So they want to stay on immigration where Obama had bigger problems than anybody, where Bush had problems, where other pre They want to stay on immigration because they don't want to go into the halls of Congress, which has totally revealed the Russian scam that's going on. What a group. What a group. I'll tell you something, we want to get along with Russia, but Russia's looking out and they're saying, man, I wish she won between our military, our oil that we're doing. She wanted to have windmills, you know. We want to compete with the oil. All the things we've done, all the things we've done, including sanctions, so many things. They're looking back, they're saying, you know, I wish crooked Hillary won that election. It would have been a lot better for Russia. So what we want to do is we want to elect more Republicans so that we can deliver on all of the things I'm talking about. And I'll be honest with you, we're going to deliver anyway. We're going to really deliver. Anyway. We're going to lift millions of Americans from welfare to work, from dependence to independence, and from poverty to prosperity, we are going to lift them. You know, one of the greatest things about all the jobs we've created, to me the greatest, is that people now don't get stuck in one job and they hate it, they don't want to get up in the morning. They have many, many options, they can go out. Wages are rising. It's a beautiful thing taking place. They can get something. I've always said, you know, when I make speeches on how to be successful, I always say, like, the first thing, you got to love it. You got to love it. You got to love your job or you're never going to be good. These people now that didn't have any options, they were hanging on to one job that they hated. They have many, many choices. They get the job they want. And for the first time in 20 years, wages are rising. We're going to build new airports, and we're going to build railways and highways and waterways all across this magnificent land. We have spent, because of horrible decision-making, $7 trillion in the Middle East. Think of it, $7 trillion. And if we want to fix a window, it's like a big deal. $7 trillion. It's all coming back. Remember, during the debates, I talk about growth. Growth! We need growth. Nobody's ever seen growth like we're having right now. When I go around and meet foreign leaders, they all congratulate me. Mr. President, congratulations on the growth of the United States. Congratulations. Every one of them. First thing they say. First thing they say. Is there anything more fun than a Trump rally? Is there so?
And we break every attendance record every single time, just about. We're going to put new steel into the backbone of our country, and we're going to make that steel right here in the United States. We're going to breathe new hope into our communities, and our workers are already so proud again. We will do it all with American hands, and American heart, and American pride. And everything we do, we will stand up for our citizens. We will fight for our country. We'll stand up for America. And we're going to stand up for the great state of Minnesota. And you're seeing that. Your great state was pioneered by men and women who braved the wilderness and the winters to build a better life for themselves and for their incredible families. They were really tough, and they were really smart and strong. They didn't have a lot of money. They didn't have a lot of luxury. But they had grit, and they had faith, and they had courage, and they had each other. Right? They were miners, and ministers, and fishermen, and farmers, and shipbuilders, and shopkeepers. But they all had one thing in common. They loved their families, they loved their country, and they loved their God. Together, we're renewing the miracle of the great American Midwest. Do you remember not so long ago, we were producing those cars and we were producing all of this stuff. And since then, so many companies went to Mexico and went to other places. As I said before, they are coming back and they're coming back faster than anybody could ever believe. We're standing on the shoulders of great American patriots who put down the railroads, built up the highways, and dug out the most amazing Panama Canal, losing thousands of lives in doing it. They crossed the oceans, trekked the desert, scaled the mountains, created the most incredible republic the world has ever seen. And you know what? Our republic today is prouder and greater than it ever was before. Our beautiful ancestors won two world wars, defeated fascism and communism, and put a man on the face of the moon. And I think you saw the other day we're reopening NASA. We're going to be going to space. Space Force. Space Force. So we have the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines, the Coast Guard. But we have the Air Force. Now we're going to have the Space Force, because it's a whole... We need it. We need it. As long as we are proud of who we are and what we are fighting for, we will never, ever fail. There is no place like our place. There is no place. With your help and with your voice and with your vote, the Republicans will win and keep on winning. We will keep on winning. We have great people.
And Pete is a great guy. You got to get him a victory. Great guy. Got to get Pete a victory. You got to get him a victory. We need him. We will achieve victory for our magnificent country and our magnificent land, the land that we love, because we are Americans and our hearts bleed red, white, and blue. We will never give in. We will never give up. And we will never, ever stop fighting for our country or for our flag or for our freedom. We are one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together, we will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Minnesota. Thank you, Minnesota.